Yes, Lord.
up your voice and worship. Lift up your voice. Oh, hey, araraba say. Hey, hey, araraba Let our 
beautiful savior that's who you are it's who you are felt like the Lord is he's just revealing himself today as we worship him as we glorify him as we declare to ourselves and to one another that he is a miracle working God that he's a God of miracles he's the God of the impossible I feel like the Lord is just revealing his character revealing his nature to so many of us that Whatever it is that you're going through, whether you're, like Sharon was, was just kind of encouraging us as we we're worshiping, whether you're, you're praying, whatever miracle or breakthrough or thing that you are believing in and praying for, that God is revealing himself as a miracle working God, that he is the one to deliver you and your family out of your situation. He is the one who will deliver whatever it is you are believing for. He is the one who builds you up and gives you faith to hang on not because of what you do but because of who he is he is a miracle working god so father we thank you lord reveal yourself to your people lord jesus we're in awe and in wonder of your majesty who you are, God. Father, we thank you for your presence. God is just highlighting there's there's so many things that each one of us come in with different burdens different troubles different thoughts different things on our hearts on our minds on your physical body whatever it is that we come in with but all of these things come and bow before the king of kings as we come into his presence come on church I want you to to catch this that the Lord is revealing his majesty he is revealing who he is as the king of kings that every sickness would bow its knee to the name of Jesus every problem that you face would bow its knee to the name of Jesus every hardened heart would bow its knee and surrender to the name of Jesus so Lord we exalt you in this place God whatever we come in with oh Lord we lay our burdens we cast the whole of our care as the word says upon 
upon the Lord, upon you, O God. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light and you give your people rest. You walk your people into rest, O God. So Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for how you are moving in each of our lives, O God. Only you know, Lord, what it is that we face. Only you know what we've been praying for, fighting for, and contending for. And O God, as we come into your presence, there's just a release, O Lord. A release that says, God, I cannot do this. But Lord, I hang on to the faith that you are stirring up in the body of Christ. That we encourage one another as brothers and sisters. And say, I know what you're facing. I know what you're praying for. I'm believing with you I'm going through my own struggle but we are believing our God who is great who is mighty to save good <laughs> welcome 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 why don't we do this just go ahead and, and greet somebody give somebody a, a hug a high five welcome welcome them in glad to have you here church family It's time of worship. Yeah. I could tell something something was just was just moving. I, I was smart. I grabbed a tissue before I came up here. Um, yeah, church, I, I, I hope that we we grow in this. I, I say this so many times, you know, as, as we come up here, as we worship and, and do all of these things, I pray that we we continue to grow in the presence of God, understanding what it means to entertain the presence of God. Amen. Just knowing that when we come in, when we worship, you know, we're, we're giving God us. We're giving him our attention. We're giving him our, our affection, our, our time, our energy, all of these things as we're coming in for just a brief moment, 30 something, 40 minutes, whatever it is that we're coming in here to worship. And, and this is what we're doing. We're offering of ourselves, really. And that's what we're coming in and we get to do this. But I feel like, again, God was just... There's so much that, that God just moves as we worship, as we acknowledge and, and honor His presence. There's moments like this where God just begins to reveal His nature, reveal His character. Anybody catch that today as we're worshiping? Yeah? And we just, I pray that we just learn to, learn to go after that, learn to pursue that. And when those times just open up, that we're not afraid to, or that we're not rushing to, to stick to a, a schedule or, or a guideline or, or whatever it is because this is it church 
this right here the presence of God when God moves like that that's why we gather there's nothing else there's nothing else I or anybody else could say that could top this this is the presence of God and that's the reason that we gather together every single time amen church amen amen okay I have just one thing I, I don't have any announcements or things to share I just want to share this one verse as we as we prepare to to give in our, our finances proverbs 11 verses 24 says this in the amplified translation says there is one who generously scatters abroad and yet increases all the more and there is one who withholds what is justly due but it results only in want and poverty again talking about offering of ourselves and yes we're talking about in worship but also in our finances and in our time our energy resources all these other things this, this verse kind of blows my mind. It says that there's one who scatters abroad and yet increases all the more. Proverbs is saying that there's, there's something about this where sometimes the kingdom of God, or oftentimes Jesus explains that the kingdom of God is upside down. There's a lot of things, you know, he says that who, whoever wants to be the greatest must be the servant of all, must be the least, right? You want to climb your way to the top, find your way to the bottom. When he's saying there's one who scatters abroad, you, you give out, you give so much of what whether it's your finances your resources again whatever it is there's one who scatters abroad yet increases all the more because mathematically it should be decreasing right if i give what i have i should have less but somehow in the kingdom of god the way god's god's kingdom operates he says the one who scatters yet he will increase all the more and there's one who withholds what is justly due he says it's it should be financially or whatever you know mathematically correct to hold on to this amount and yet somehow even that leads to poverty so i want to encourage you as you sow in your finances as you give in your your tithes your offerings and do doing all of these things bringing unto the lord of our treasure I pray that you you hear this principle that God is God is instilling in each one of us that there is one who as you sow and as you scatter scatter seed you know that's that's the the image and, and the parable that Jesus shares as you scatter the seed that things would begin to plant and people, things would begin to flourish and grow and do all of these things and that you would increase all the more instead of decrease amen amen let's do this let's pray father God we thank you we thank you for this time to to come together lord we again we thank you for your presence we thank you for this body of believers of brothers and sisters in christ that we can gather together as one in one heart and in one vision one purpose lord lord as we bring of ourselves oh god we bring not only our worship we bring not only our attention but god we god we bring our finances our resources money and all of these things that you have abundantly blessed us with lord that every good blessing comes from you oh god and lord we bring back to you what is rightly yours oh god and we sow things into the kingdom of god that we would be generous and be able to sow into the things where you have planted us and where you have placed us god i pray that you would increase your people god in every facet in every area of their life as they obey in this small measure of earthly resource lord that you would release the blessing of god of the the kingdom of heaven and, and the blessing uh, and the floodgates of heaven be opened upon your people to be blessed in every area O lord as we sow and as we would continue to increase O god father we thank you for what you are doing in our midst O lord pray this in jesus name amen amen you're welcome to come on down we've got boxes in the front you know we've got a few ways you can give online via text zell you can drop off a check in the office as well but you can come on down to these boxes right here I have no announcements. I said it. We're good. We're good to go. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello City Blessing family, April is finally here and we are so excited to have you all here with us at church. I'm Jessica, here with your Sunday announcements. 
First, we want to emphasize that we believe in prayer and that a house covered and built in prayer will be sustained in prayer. Every Sunday service, we will have pre-service prayer in the sanctuary. We want to invite you all and encourage you all to come 15 minutes earlier and pray with your carousel members, ministry members, youth, college, and so on. Let's continue to build the momentum of prayer. And next, we want to give a big shout out and appreciation for all the parents who attended our first ever Parents and Guardian Open House this past Friday. Stay updated by following us at O2 Generation. Next, we have Sharon with an announcement about Daughters. Ladies, we are so excited to announce the upcoming launch of Daughters, a new women's movement to empower women of all generations to walk in their God-given identity to advance the Kingdom of God. Many of you ladies gathered together last year for our church's first ever women's conference where God stirred our hearts and awakened us to see the urgent call to arise and stand for such a time as this. Moving forward, we are officially launching Daughters as an established movement here at City Blessing to equip women, whether you're in school, working, mothering, or whatever in between, to pursue Christ and partner with Him. We are excited to kick off things with a luncheon on Sunday, April 28th at 1 p.m. at our Walnut Campus. No registration is required, just save your seat by placing a flower sticker on the sign-up board in the lobby. Come and join us as we launch Daughters and share the vision for all that's to come this year. See you at launch! Awesome. Thank you, Sharon. And last but not least, let's give it to Rich Wisely for a building update. Good morning, City Blessing Church. Rich Wisely, your training center project supervisor here with your Sunday morning update. Well, we were hoping to have much more progress this week than we did, but we've spent most of the week waiting for this particular pad to dry out. You know, I was celebrating last week that we were about ready to put in the Northwest Retaining Wall. A picture of that should be coming up on your screen. We can't even go down there because of the mud. But we were frustrated when we came back onto the site on Monday because we were unable to get that wall in and part of the work that we'd done was damaged by the rains last weekend. Now, while we were frustrated at being set back, we had a meeting that same day, Monday afternoon, with the power company, and they changed the design for how they're gonna bring power into the new training center. Now, here's the good news. Had we put that retaining wall in like we wanted to, we would have been cutting up and throwing away $35,000 worth of concrete. So what seemed like a setback to us was actually God slowing us down and preparing us for something better. Because the new design from the power company is gonna serve our current and future needs so much better and it'll be so much more attractive. You know, the Rolling Stones famously said, you can't always get what you want, but sometimes you get what you need. The Apostle Paul said it better. In Romans 8, 28, he writes, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Folks, Paul's talking about people and our salvation there, but it also applies to the work that we do for the Lord. Sometimes God uses the setbacks in life to prepare us for something far better. And that goes even when there's mud and we can't work. Folks, thank you for your prayers and support and the opportunity to serve you each and every week. God bless, and we'll talk to you again. Thank you, church. And that is all for this week's announcements. This has been just the best, and God bless. God is good. All the time, God is good. Amen. Amen. And it's an honor for me to have you here and uh, to come in person. I want to welcome you again. And uh, I'm Pastor Paul. And uh, it is nice to have you here. And I want to welcome Onko and Esther all the way from Portland, Oregon. Is that Hannah? Wow, all right, I haven't seen you for a long time. And if you come here for the very first time, would you wave? I'd like to welcome you. Oh, praise the Lord. Welcome, brother. Welcome. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. In the announcement, you, uh, you, you watched that. Um, last Friday, we had parents and guardian open house here uh, from our O2. And I want to appreciate all of you parents again, personally. And how many of you were here? Come on, uh, I want to appreciate you. Raise your hand, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Praise the Lord. And uh, this time I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Garrett and Abby and his team. Come on. And uh, he says, Praise the Lord. Come on, give, give them a big hand. You can do better than that. It's a lot of work. And uh, he has poured his, his, his heart out and he trained and equipped our, our young people. And uh, last month, he thought about Holy Spirit. And uh, many of our young people, they are filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, they know who is the Holy Spirit, not what is the Holy Spirit? Are you with me? And I, I really, I really appreciate them. And uh, I believe today God is going to speak to you in a very personal and special way. And in my prayer, I pray that God will touch each and every one of us so that we can experience Him in a deeper way, in a special way. How many of you want that? And uh, so I'd like to take time right now. Why don't you all stand up one more time and we are going to pray. And uh, I got a word from, from our intercessor here and uh, it is in line with, uh, with, the, with the vision that I saw. And I'm going to just coordinate that in prayer. And uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's pray right now. Even as we worship the Lord, I saw a cloud, and that cloud is speaking about the cloud that is in some of your minds. And that cloud has been clouding you so that you cannot see clearer. And the enemy has been trying to block your sight, your insight. And uh, because of that reason, you know, the intercessor texts me in a, and, and they use different word. It's like uh, there is a line in their head and stop putting God in a box. So how many of you, uh, you can agree right now in my, with, with my prayer, I don't want to put, to put God in a box. I want to welcome the Holy Spirit. I want to welcome the Holy Spirit to speak to me right now. And whatever situation, whatever challenges that you just encounter, welcome the Holy Spirit and uh, God can do mighty things beyond your imagination. And why don't you begin to use your imagination to, to think about how great our God is. God is great and He is going to bring each and every one of you in a dimension that is beyond greatness. Beyond greatness. Come on, don't look at your past because, oh, yes, some of you, you have been clouded because um, you... You are, you are afraid to look at your past because you know what you did in the past. But why don't you right now ask the Holy Spirit to give you, to give you boldness to come into the throne of grace and uh, you come to His throne by the grace of God and you know, guess what? Listen to me. Listen as we are praying right now. When you come to the throne of God with grace, when you look at your past, your past is actually clean, white as snow. As long as you come to Him and come in humility, come in, come in repentance and come and embrace His love. Father, I thank you that today is a special day and I know that the Holy Spirit is here and uh, continue to speak to each and every one of us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, all God's people said, Amen. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This month, our focus is be salt and light. Can you say, be salt and light? Be salt and light. And of course, our theme the whole year is the great harvest. And I still believe that God is going to bring great harvest of souls to our church and uh, harvest of resources as well, as well. So be salt and light. So if I can make it a little bit more personal, it is not only be salt and light. How about if I say it this way? Be salt. Be salt. Be light. 
And I'm going to read to you from the book of Matthew from a context that Jesus preached. And uh, when Jesus preached, and it is known as the Sermon on the Mount, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7, and um, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, he spoke clearly about this verse that many of you probably, I'm, 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 I'm sure that you are, you're familiar with this, this verse, but today I'm going to read it from the message translation. And this is what it says. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 until 16. It says, let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out God favors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You have lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. What? I didn't say it. This is the word of God. In different translations, it is kind of, wow, straight to the point. And then it continues to say, here's another way to put it. You are here to be what? can hear you. To be what? To be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public. We're going public. Can we say that together? We are going public. We are going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. And then verse 15, it says, If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine, shine. Keep open house, be generous with your life. By opening up to others, you will prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. So when we're talking about salt and light, I am I'm encouraged that in the last several days, I've been going to this global summit in Pasadena with Pastor Cheyan, and some of you were there too. And uh, I am honored that I'm one of the international apostolic team with HIM. And HIM is uh, an acronym of Harvest International Ministry. And it has a ministry over 70 nations, over 70 nations. And so there were people from, from Peru, from Cuba, from Ghana, from, from Europe, from England, from uh, wherever. You know, it's just like... And uh, we are, I'm so encouraged to hear great testimonies, great um, testimonies of how God works in many different parts of the world. And in this, in this network alone, there are mighty men and women of God. They are hungry for God. And I'm so encouraged because when, when we understand the word of God about the global, about the, 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 the church in a global sense, we are not it. We are a part of the big body of Christ globally. And we are on the winning side. Amen? Amen. We are on the winning side. And I want to encourage you. And uh, if you feel like you, as a Christian, as a believer, as the follower of Jesus, you face a lot of challenges, come on now. Look at the positive side. We are not alone, and there are a lot of brothers and sisters all around the world that are in the, in the same page with us. So, when we're talking about salt and light, be salt and be light, this is my observation. The longer you are a Christian, the longer you become the follower of Jesus, the further you become removed from the world you have been called to reach because the circle of your life becomes filled primarily with the believers only. So it is, it is good that we can fellowship and hang out with our fellow believers, 
But don't forget that the purpose is just like what this verse is saying. Remember, you need to know why you are here. Why are you here? So in other words, we need to be intentional. We need to be intentional to reach out to the people that don't know Jesus yet. We need to reach out to them. But, can you say but? But we need to understand when the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, uh, when, 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 when it is written that you shall receive power when you receive the Holy Spirit, you need to understand this. Watch this. When you receive the Holy Spirit, it is not for you to receive the Holy Spirit so that you can do witnessing. No. Read that verse again. You shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit and you shall be. You shall be a witness because there are some people, there are some people that are trying to do witnessing, but they are not a witness. Their life is not a witness. They are not salt. They are not light. My personal experience, my parents, they had a hard time to be the follower of Jesus because even when I was young, I was younger, you know, I, I knew that my parents were cheated by someone who professed themselves as Christians, churchgoers, quoted scriptures, but they cheated my parents. How many of you believe that God can work in the exact opposite. Yes. This is what I meant. I received Jesus not because somebody preached to me, not because somebody just promote going to church or bring big Bible. No. I received Jesus because of a life testimony of my roommate. He became salt. He was salt. He was light, never preached to me, and I watched his life. I watched his life, and then after several months being his roommate, I said, I want to become like you. Can you please tell me, you're, 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 you're different than me. You are the same with me, but you're different than me. What do you mean by that? Because he has the first, first uh, the, his first name is the same, the birth date, month, date, year is exactly the same. Hey, and uh, he's now a pastor here in, in Baptists in, in, in Monrovia. So I, I told him, I want to become like you because he, his life is, he is salt. He is light. And this is what I meant by God working in such a way that he, he works with the opposite spirit that I received Jesus not because of preaching, but because of life testimony. Are you with me? So when we're talking about be salt and light, I think I'm right if I say that the devil doesn't matter. The, the devil won't bother if you have a good time at church. As long as you don't do anything after you leave. We can have a good time and it's, it's okay to have a good time, but what do we do after service? What do we do after church? Because actually, church doesn't start at 11. What do you mean, Pastor, at 11, uh, at 10.45, because we just announced it, we have a prayer before. No, 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 no. The church, actually, the ch you are the church. So the church starts when you leave the building. And there is a war, there is a war, there is a spiritual war, and we need to understand that the war is not between Satan and God. The war is between Satan and the people who is created in God's image. God has no problem to just fight a war, you know, with the devil. I, I, I said it a couple of months ago that he doesn't have to do anything. When he showed up, 
When he showed up, you know, the enemy is scattered. That's it. He doesn't have to do anything. So the war is between Satan and the people who were created in his image, that is, you and I. So again, be salt. Be salt. And uh, I learned that um, uh, we need to ask ourselves this question, what, what does it mean to be salt? Well, I, I did a little research here that in LA County, there are 9.7 million people based on 2022 statistic. In San Bernardino County, 2.2 million. Orange County, 3.15 million. In the city of Walnut, in the city of Walnut, there's 27,356 people. And uh, out of those thousands and millions of people, I assume probably 10 percent, 10 percent would would read the Bible. I hope, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure that even 10 percent of those that even call themselves to be Christian that they read their Bible. But I am sure. I am sure that everybody you came in contact with, they read you. They may not read the Bible, but they read you. D.L. Moody said, quote, out of 100 men, one will read the Bible, the other 99 will read the Christian. Francis Assisi said, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. So we need to understand that we we are being watched. If you say that you are a Christian, you are a follower of Jesus, you go to church, people watch you, but uh, not only, well, whether you are a Christian or not, people watch you anyway. You can impact people in a good way and in a bad way. Hello? <laughs> there was a, uh, a lawyer from India, probably you're familiar with the name. His name is Mahatma Gandhi. This is what he said, quote, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. Ooh. He said that because when he was studying in England, he went to church and the people at church rejected him. So we need to understand that People are reading us. We need to make sure by the grace of God that we are filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can be witnesses. Not necessarily doing the work of witnessing. Are you still with me? So people read you. Paul the Apostle said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, you show that you are a letter from Christ. Oh, so you are, we are a letter from Christ. So that means they read you, they read us. Are you with me? The result of our ministry written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Wow, praise the Lord. So be salt. Be salt. That means if we are salt, which we should, we should be salty. We should be salty. And uh, I learned that the Bible is connected between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned about as we share, as we read the Bible, you can really see that there are a lot of connection and you can connect the dots. You can connect the dots between the uh, Old Testament and the New Testament because the Word of God is eternal. 
Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God is eternal. So uh, let me share to you about being salt from the uh, Old Testament is there is covenant of salt. Covenant of salt. Can you say covenant of salt? Now let me read to you from the Old Testament and it is from the book of Leviticus chapter 2 verse 13. It says, And every offering that your grain offering, and every offering of your grain offering you shall season with what? Oh, with salt. You shall not allow the salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. Oh, what does it have to do with us today? We will see. In the book of Numbers chapter 18, verse 19, it says, all the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer to the Lord, I have given to you and your sons and daughters with you as an ordinance forever. Can you say forever? It is a covenant of salt. It is a covenant of salt forever. Can you say forever? That means we need to remember that covenant. We need to remember the covenant. God is doing, God has done, and God has a lot of covenants that we, are, we need to do. And one of them is we are going to partake in communion after I preach the sermon. And it is also a covenant that God has made to his people, to you and I. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord with you and your descendants with you. And your descendants with you. So it is, it is very important for us to, to really understand about the covenant of salt. What does it have to do with us today? Well, in the ancient days, in the wedding, you know, when they, when they got married, the bride will bring a pouch of salt and also the, the groom. And they will take a pinch of the salt from the pouch and then put it in a special place. And the same thing, the bride and the groom. Nowadays, when you go to wedding celebration, people usually lit the common candle, right? Two candles and you light it. The bride and the groom lit the candle and then the middle candle lit up and they uh, become one. And also, some people do with sand, with different colors. How many of you have seen that? So the bride and the groom, they make a covenant, okay, from this color and then that color and then, and then it becomes mixed so that it is not separable. It is not separable, separable. But uh, that is one of the example. And um, in the Old Testament, in the ancient days, when they made a covenant of salt, they would face each other and the person who is making a covenant. A covenant is a promise. Are you with me? And one person would throw salt over the shoulder of another person. And the other person would do the same. And as they did this thing, they said, if I broke my friendship and my loyalty to you, may I be dead. So covenant of salt is covenant of friendship and covenant of loyalty. That's why when we prayed, when we dedicated the training center a couple of months ago, how many of you were here? And we not only prayed, yes, we prayed, we, we had Prayer training, yes, and then we pour oil, and then we pour what? Salt. And that is a covenant that we, as a church, we make to God. God, I make a covenant with you 
that long after I'm gone, long after we are gone, the building is still there, God will use this whole facility, this whole property that we declare we will forever become friend with God and we promise to be loyal to you. Not only me, but my next generation and the next generation and the next generation. We promise God will be loyal. So I think after you hear this, the meaning of covenant of salt, you cannot take it lightly. We are living in a days right now that loyalty is not in many of the people's vocabulary. Commitment and loyalty, oh no, no. But we need to remember this is a commitment between, between us and God and this is a commitment that we need to have one another. Hello? We need to have a commitment between one another. Lord, Lord, this is, this is very important. We make a commitment that we will have a friendship. Can you say friendship? Friendship, friendship relationship with God. James chapter 4 verse 4 said that if you are a friend to the world, you are an enemy to God. So that means if we allow mixtures in our life, our salt is mess, mess up. We mess up. So God help us to be salt. Amen. Salt is a preservative. Salt is a preservative. And I learned recently, you know, well, I learned many, many years ago, but sometimes I forgot. You know, uh, in the past several days, I've been uh, so tight in my agenda and conference and travel and meetings and this and that, so I kind of I, I kinda tired. And uh, my throat kind of hurt. And, uh, you know, and then I remember about salt water. So I just pick up water and uh, mix it with salt and I gar gargle with salt. Oh, oh, you know. On Friday, I almost lost my voice actually. But actually it is simple. You don't have to go get antibiotic. Why don't you try salt? Free information. If you have sore throat, try that. <laughs> but uh, salt is a preservative. In those days, again, in those days, they don't have refrigerator. So they, they couldn't refrigerate anything. So meat, meat have to be salt rubbed in it so that meat can be preserved. So, in our walk with God, sometimes we, sometimes we have to, we have to persevere, we have to be strong, we have to, oh God, help us, how many of you are having a hard time in your walk with the Lord sometimes? And you need to persevere, you need to persevere, right? But do you know that actually God himself preserves you? God preserve us. In the book of Psalms, chapter 121, verse 7, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. You need to get this, oh God. So, <laughs> Lord, it's not that I am the one that keeps myself, but God is keeping me. God, you are keeping me. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And uh, so again, if, if meat gets rotten because it is not rubbed with salt, it is not the meat's fault. Ah. 
Many years ago, I bought a book by this man by the name of John Stott. And I want to read to you this quote by John Stott. When society does go bad, we Christians tend to throw up our hands in pious horror and reproach the non-Christian world. But should we not rather reproach ourselves? One can hardly blame unsalted meat for going bad, it cannot do anything else. The real question to ask is, where is the salt? Where is the salt? So we know what is happening in, in, in our nation and um, things all around the world, but why don't we ask ourselves, are we salt enough? Are we salty enough? Or have we lost its flavor? Salt needs to be, salt by nature is salty. It can lose its saltiness only if the salt is diluted. If there is mixture. So I pray today that as we humble ourselves, we can ask the Lord, God, I, I repent. I repent and I, I want to be salt. I want to be salt right now. I want to become a witness. I'm a witness and I want to, I want to share others. Are you still with me? Yes. So, are you, are, you, are you salty enough? Your presence, if you are, whether you realize it or not, I mentioned it earlier, we can influence people in a bad thing or in a good thing. How many of you remember that song? Uh, when he comes into the room, everything changes. Well, that he is in you, if that he is in you, then when you come into a place, the atmosphere changes. I remember when I was still active in business, one of my business friends, <laughs> every time I met him, he was, he, his foul words come out of his mouth. Foul words. Foul words. And from time to time, you know, not only foul words, but uh, he would curse using Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So I met him once, twice, eight times, one month, two months, and, uh, and then he began to change. And um, when, I, when I went to his office, he said, shh, 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 Paul is here. <laughs> no foul words. But from time to time, he still cuss. And uh, using that word, Jesus Christ. So one day I prayed, I prayed, and I said, Excuse me, uh, I noticed that over the past several months you have been using that name, Jesus Christ, as a curse. I want you to know that He happened to be my Lord and He is my Savior. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm a Christian too. Some of you don't get it. <laughs> I'm a Christian too. Uh, I don't know where you are right now, your position with Christ. If you have been wounded or disappointed by people who call themselves Christian, but they are not salt, and that has hindered you to receive Jesus. I want to ask forgiveness. So that from now on, you understand what Jesus said. If we are not salty, we'll be thrown in the garbage. The third point is uh, salt 
adds flavor. Remember the word that I just read to you from Matthew chapter 5? God flavor. Can you say God flavor? flavor. What flavor do you want? Vanilla or chocolate? God flavor. (laughs) Hello. You can bring flavor. You can bring flavor. When you come into the room, when you come into a meeting, somebody else is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. You can bring peace. When people are quarreling, when people are, are, they, they, are they are sad, they are, they are in confusion. And then when you show up, suddenly, hmm, ah, the atmosphere changed. Because you come. Hello. You can bring joy. You can bring laughter. That they can laugh with you because you don't laugh at them. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Second point is be light. So be light. Be light. And uh, when, when you... When you read that verse, you know, probably when you read the Bible, you kind of have this question. So, uh, who is light? Is, is God light or are we light? Well, actually, both are correct. Because uh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. And in John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And he repeated again in John chapter 9, verse 5, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But it doesn't stop right there. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. John chapter 12, verse 35, 36. Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you are the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness doesn't know where he's going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become what? Oh, so you are, you are, you are now. We are. If you need to know this, and again, if I can help you to connect the dots, apparently in the Old Testament, it was said by the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, for behold, that means, hey, this is very serious, very serious. The darkness shall cover the earth, comma. Can you say comma? Why did I say that? Because I want to emphasize the next words. The deep darkness, the people. The deep darkness, the people. So it's going to be darker. It's going to be darker. But the Lord, can you say, but the Lord? Can you roar and say it loudly? But the Lord. Louder, but the Lord. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. So don't complain if you are put in the middle of non-believers. If you are put in the middle of non-believers, you 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 got transferred. Your company transfer you somewhere, or you get promotion, and you like the promotion, but then you used to have a lot more Christian friends, but when you're being promoted, uh, only a handful of people that profess themselves as Christian, and you complain, oh, I don't like this place. Why, God, God, why you put me in this place right now? You want to know the answer? Because it's dark. And God entrusted you. 
He put you there because he has confidence that you can become light. He has confidence that you can become salt. When I learn about faith, I think if I say I have faith in God, it is not a big deal. So what is the big deal? The big deal is when God has faith in me. God, you have faith in me? I hope you catch this. Arise, shine. Come on, arise, shine. Oh, you are not filled with darkness. You are filled with light. You are filled with light. So in the middle of darkness, just shine. The nature of light shines. Hello. My friend L. Hollingsworth said, to be enthusiastic, you have to act enthusiastic. How many of you still remember that, old timers? In our life, you not always, every day you wake up being enthusiastic. So talk to yourself. Be enthusiastic. Look at the mirror. Talk to yourself. And I'm not advocating craziness here. <laughs> talk to yourself. Paul, be enthusiastic. Look eye to eye in the mirror. Paul, today, be enthusiastic. And then when my eyes wandering around, look back. Come on, look, look, look. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Oh, God. Let me conclude with this. Matthew 5.15, it says, If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I think you, you understand this. I think this makes sense. You agree with me? Yeah. How many of you would, would put a light uh, under the table? Huh? You lit a candle under a bucket, you can caught on fire. It is common sense. Jesus, why, why, why you say it so obvious? Because our common sense can say, yeah, 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 that makes sense. But when we leave the church, we may not shine. Why? Because we are afraid. We are afraid if we say, if we, if I share to my friend that I'm a Christian, then I need to live according to their expectation. So I better not say it, so I better hide myself. I just blend with them. As long as I'm safe, as long as I receive Jesus, I go to church every week, I'm saved. But I, I blend with them. They curse, I curse too. They curse, I... I'm no different. Hello? I remember there was a story of this. A mother that brought her son to a church uh, retreat. The presence of God was so strong. And when the preacher preached and uh, 
the mother, the mother is a very, very uh, devout Christian. She prayed that her son would be touched. And sure enough, in that retreat, her son was touched by God so powerfully. He cried, he sobbed, he repented. Oh, God. And the mother said, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for answering my prayer. And Monday, he went to school. And the mother prayed that his friends would not bully him. She prayed that her son would become salt and light. Stand in the middle of darkness. So when the boy comes home, she didn't say any, she didn't ask anything to her son. One day, two days, three days, Friday evening, seems like her son is okay. Wow. So she asked her, son, you were touched in that retreat so powerfully. Yes, mom. Are you, are you okay at school? Nobody, nobody bullied you? Oh, no, mom. Uh, I just act like them. So they, know, they don't know that I'm a Christian. I just blend with them. How about if we personalize that story? What would the heart of our Heavenly Father feel if we just blend with the world? Again, James 4 verse 4, if you are a friend to the world, you are an enemy to God. You cannot mix. We cannot just say, I'm a Christian and not salty. No flavor, no color, no identity because we are afraid and we put our light under the table. And please listen. I'm not saying that you need to preach. Let me emphasize it again. You don't have to preach, but you can be a witness. Your life testimony. You have a life story that people will read you. Let's all stand up. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you, O oh God. I want us right now in the position of prayer right now and um, pray, pray, pray that um, whatever fear that you have, that you don't, you don't want to shine, you put your light under a basket. Fear of rejection. Fear of misunderstanding, fear of men, fear of people asking questions that you don't have the answer. Whatever fear it is. Hey, come on. Um, you are powerful. You are powerful. I want to share that word, you are. You are. You are, you are. And that word you in the original language is you personally. You personally. It's not like you in a group. It's not like you are. Hey, come on, you people that go to City Blessing, you are salt of the earth. No, no, no. Uh, in the original language, it is a specific name, specific, specific name. So why don't you say, I am salt? 
I am light. Now let me let me tell you how powerful you are. One of the person that I met some 12, maybe 15 years ago through Dr. C. Peter Wagner, my mentor. She's a lady and she's still single. And um, she's still single until today. I think she's in her 40s. The Lord touched her. She's a Caucasian. And uh, one day as he was praying, the Holy Spirit spoke to her to go to India. She has no one in India, no relative, no friend. But as she prayed, the Lord directed her to a specific city in India. So she came to Dr. Peter Wagner and said, uh, Peter, can you please pray for me? The Lord led me to go to India as a missionary. Oh, really? Wow. And she continued saying, I have bought a one-way ticket. I'm ready to die there. Long story short, and I got to know uh, her, not personally, but through the gathering, like in the conference, she gave testimony. And within just several years, <laughs> Peter Wagner called her up and said, um, she asked me this question because Dr. C. Peter Wagner, she, he was a uh, professor of church growth in Fuller Seminary. And uh, so this lady asked, her, asked him, uh, please help me to break 100,000 barrier. The congregation has reached over 100,000 people. If that is what it meant. And Peter Wagner said, I, I never experienced that. And he, she kept on reaching out, reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. And from 100,000 to right now, she has planted, she herself has planted 40,000 churches in India. Jesus. Now she is banned in India. She is back in the country now. 40,000 churches. One single lady. I was going to invite her actually in the service. But next time. This is what I meant by you, one person. You are salt. You are light. You are powerful. You are powerful. Jesus said it. While I am on this earth, I am the light of the earth. But in a little while, I'll be gone. And you are. Father, I thank you. Right now, I want to take this opportunity to ask you. I don't know who you are. I don't know all of you. But if you, if you have not experienced how good God is. When I, when I mention about God flavor, you know, the Bible mentioned, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who put his trust in him. So taste and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So you can taste God flavor. You can taste. Maybe you have been disappointed by people that profess themselves Christian, but they don't live it. They, they don't walk the talk. And you have been disappointed. Now, would you forgive them? And I would ask you to forgive them. And now, if you have not 
make a decision to welcome Jesus and you you want to say I want to taste I want to taste pastor I want to taste and see I've been to church <laughs> I know some of my friends that are Christian but I never taste how good God is you want to taste how good God is you want to receive Jesus I want to pray for you just lift up your hand lift up your hand anybody anybody here Anybody who are watching online, taste and see that God is good. If you receive Jesus online, you can call the office. Oh Lord Jesus. So Father, right now, Father, I pray that as I share the word, it is my desire that during this, the year of great harvests, we become salt and light thank you Lord Jesus we are going to partake in communion right now I want you to prepare the communion element and again to connect the dots this is a covenant between God and man covenant between God and man Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Broken. Can you say broken? His body was broken so that if we want to experience him, we need to humble ourselves and, and be broken in repentance. He was broken so that we can be united. He he became like us so that we can become like Him. This is a covenant that Jesus made, the new covenant. Promise, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we lift up this bread, which is the body of Christ. We thank you, God, for sending Jesus to die on the cross, resurrected for, from death, and ascended to heaven. We partake in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat. We lift up this cup which represents the blood of Christ. So Father, right now I pray as we declare miracle, as we declare oh, I want to in, in, in line with what the worship leader has led us into singing that song, miracle, miracle, miracle. I, I pray for miracle for those that need miracle, healing deliverance remove the clouds remove the red line and that they will experience Jesus in a special way right now in Jesus name let's partake Amen thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Let's worship. Yes. I believe in you. Mm. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Say it again. Oh. Come on, sing this song. I believe in you I believe in you You're the God of miracles I believe in you I believe in you You're the God of miracles Sing the 
God who was and is. The God who was and is to come. The power of the risen one. The God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. miracle right now I release your presence oh God and as we go oh God as we go home we will remember that we are the church we are the church say it with me I am the church one more time I am the church I am salt and light of the earth in Jesus name bless your people oh God Bless them. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you.